Good evening, this is CNN. I'm Michael Plasmar. And I'm Lauren Shoppett. Our reporter Lydia Ball is covering this news that O.J. Simpson has just been acquitted of murder charges. We, the jury in the involved in title action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Nicole Brown Simpson, a human being, as charged in count one of the information. Hello, I am standing outside the courtroom right now, and O.J. Simpson has just been acquitted. As you may well know, O.J. Simpson was accused of the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson, his ex-wife, and her friend, Robert L. Goldman. This trial has been in the press for the last few years and has been extremely important. For one, it has been the first quote-unquote digital trial. Uh, all the press has been focused on it and it has shown up in the internet, in forums where the average citizen has been deciding OJ's guilt for themselves. It also has shown up on the television, as shown right now. There have been many scandals involved in this trial, including one on the DNA expert. DNA, a relatively new thing to forensic science, has been used in this trial, but the DNA expert was accused of drug use. He admitted to several um, uses of the drug LSD, which causes hallucinations. There's also been ac accusations of the mishandlement of the DNA that was found on the glove that was supposedly found with O.J. Simpson's blood on it. The glove was mishandled by the police, thus causing several scandals. Also, the glove didn't fit O.J. Simpson, causing many to doubt his guilt. There has also been several scandals involving the jury. For instance, an anonymous letter was sent that said that one of the jury members was planning on writing a book which would be highly illegal and she had already made up her mind about O.J. Simpson's guilt. Now we go to Larissa, who is covering the Bill and Monica Lewinsky trials. President Clinton was acquitted today of charges of obstruction of justice and perjury. Prosecutor Kenneth Starr investigated Clinton's alleged affair with White House intern Monica Lewinsky. Starr believes Monica Lewinsky is being bought off with promises of employment. Investigators questioned Clinton under oath about his relationship with Lewinsky, and he publicly denied having sexual relations with her. If Monica Lewinsky says that while you were in the Oval Office area you touched her breast, would she be lying? Let me say something about all this. All I really need for you, Mr. President, I know, is to say I, I, won't, I won't answer under the previous grounds or, or to answer the question, you see, because we only have four hours and your answers I know. Have well, been it's extremely it, lengthy. But go ahead and ask your questions. The question is, if Monica, if Monica Lewinsky says that while you were in the Oval Office area, you touched her breast, would she be lying? That is not my recollection. My recollection is that I did not have sexual relations with Ms. Lewinsky, and I'm staying on my former statement about that. If she my, said, my, my, my statement is that I did not have sexual relations as defined by that. Starr sent his report to the House, which voted along party lines to impeach President Clinton. In the Senate, it became clear that they could not achieve a two-thirds vote to convict Clinton and remove him from office. Those voting against impeachment argue that the president's actions were tawdry and involved private matters, not high crimes and misdemeanors, amounting to offenses against the state. And we're getting word that in the Soviet Union, the people are refusing to stand up to the new hardline government that's trying to bring back communism. Josh Hosan reports. Communism has come to a close in the Soviet Union. After being under the reign of Miguel Gorbachev for many years, a few hardline communists took over the power from Gorbachev after he implemented many democratic ideas into the Soviet Union. These communists tried to get the military to do their bidding, but these, the military turned on the communists and sided with the citizens instead. After the communists fell out of power, communism has ended and, these, and the Soviet Union has dissolved into 15 separate nations which are spread throughout Asia and Eastern Europe. And in a striking turn of events, the East Germans have allowed the Berlin Wall to finally come down. For more, we go to our reporter, Josh. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. East and West Germans have finally united under one common goal 
of bringing down the Berlin, Berlin Wall in Germany. This is good for the United States, as the fall of the Berlin Wall signals the end of the Soviet reign of communism in Eastern Europe, which the United States has been trying to end for many decades now. Hundreds of thousands of people are marching in Washington under the banner of the Nation of Islam. For more, we go to our reporter, Chris Denny. Today in Washington, D.C. was the Million Man March. Almost a million black men gathered together under the leadership of the Nation of Islam by director Benjamin Chavez Muhammad. The march was based to encourage black men to feel that they are really part of the society, to get involved, to vote in the next U.S. election, and to become more volunteers in their local communities. The leader of the Nation of Is Islam, Minister Farrakhan, says, the image you have of black men is not the image of who and what we really are. Back to you. Well, President Bush has said that Saddam Hussein is running on borrowed time. Well, tonight it appears that his time has run up, and the United States is beginning its invasion of Kuwait. Five months ago, Saddam Hussein started this cruel war against Kuwait. Tonight, the battle has been joined. This military action, taken in accord with United Nations resolutions and with the consent of the United States Congress, follows months of constant and virtually endless diplomatic, diplomatic activity on the part of the United Nations, the United States, and many, many other countries. President Bush has ordered the start of Operation Desert Storm. This is in response to Saddam Hussein ordering his Iraqi troops to invade Kuwait. Operation Desert Storm's mission is to liberate the country of Kuwait as well as the country of Saudi Arabia. This is very important to the United States, as both Kuwait and Saudi Arabia own a large portion of the world's oil supply. Winning this war will keep the U.S. in control of this oil and will help the U.S. economy. And now Lenny is giving us an in-depth look at the Right to Die movement by Dr. Kevorkian. Dr. Kevorkian believes that everyone should choose whether they have the right to die or live if they are in an extreme state. In 1993, there was a ban on suicide that was set up because the state of Michigan wanted to put a state commission on death and dying into the works. This made assisted suicide illegal. But in 1994, this ban was removed due to the fact that it had one, more than one purpose. In 1997, the Supreme Court decided that there is, the states are allowed to make bans on assisted suicide and it does not compromise the 14th Amendment. A few states have placed this ban on assisted suicide because they believe that it violates the Hippocratic Oath. But Dr. Kevorkian believes otherwise. If a person feels in his own mind that he is crippled in suffering in some way but where life is no longer for him or her worthwhile, then it's up to me to help no matter what I think personally. This is this, what I'm doing, what I'm doing, which the religious fanatics suppose was absolutely ethical. Get that, those words, absolutely ethical and widely practiced in Hippocratic Greece. And if Hippocrates were here today, you think he would curse me and, and, and pat them on the back? Never. What I'm doing was absolutely ethical. Just because religious dogma made it unethical doesn't mean it's medically unethical. When the patient hits the switch, the saline is cut. And now for an exclusive interview with the president himself. Oh! 